This is the Talk Show America Show. There's the place where we learn to stand tall as we all pledge allegiance to our right on the wall. Whatever happens to in God, we trust our neighbor's words. So we something to the most of us. Where's the voice of the majority? Can someone please tell me? Where's my country? Where's my country? Country. And welcome one and all to the Talk Show American. JR here with you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen. We certainly appreciate it, folks, very much indeed. Jeez, uh, folks. It's uh, February uh, February 9th, uh, 2024, and what a difference a day makes. Yesterday, Thursday, a whole bunch of information came out, folks, about uh, Joe Biden uh, and uh, the report on the classified uh, his his the investigation into his classified documents that he held on to uh, when he was a senator and a vice vice president uh, when there was no uh, you know there was no uh, statutory right for him to to have those outside of the confines of the uh, of the um, the uh, his vice president role or a role as a senator um, and the report's just unbelievable and we're going to talk a little bit about today hopefully. Um, we, how Trump is faring out so far, at least in the um, the um, ballot, the Colorado ballot fight um, in the Supreme with the Supreme Court, and they're hearing this um, uh, this uh, this battle, and it's looking to me like uh, the way things are, are turning out right now, anyway. And then we have they haven't made the vote yet, so we can't say for sure, folks. But looking, it's looking to me like uh, Trump uh, is going to win this battle. Probably nine to nothing, or at least with the overwhelming majority of Supreme Court justices agreeing with him. Uh, so uh, it should be an interesting thing. But we want to get onto this to this Biden uh, situation uh, because it certainly um, is something to look at. Uh, you know, to talk about it's unbelievable, folks. Uh, the classified memos report. Uh, it reignites a, a, a debate about the dual, dual justice that we have right now, a dual justice system. In other words, a justice system, two-tier justice system, as they try to say it is. You know, one, you know, one thing for Trump, one thing for Biden. Um, but anyway, the special counsel Robert Hur's report, the final report on uh, Joe Biden's retention and dissemination of highly classified uh, information, um, is uh, is out and. What has been said in it has reignited concerns of a dual justice system while putting the full weight of the government behind the notion that America is currently being served by a president with diminished faculties or diminished capacity, folks. It was a 388-page report that was released yesterday, um, and it could have, it may have spared uh, Biden uh, the, uh, uh, the chance of a criminal prosecution uh, similar, similar to the, the Justice Department um, um, investigation into Donald Trump. Uh, but it also delivered a, a devastating blow to Biden um, and his re-election hopes by going out of the way to explain criminal charges weren't levied in part because they don't believe jurors um, would find him guilty because they would see him as uh, a forgetful old man incapable of criminal intent. Uh, and, you know, it goes, it, it says it even in more than that, but it talks about, uh, it says, uh, quote, Mr. Biden will pr present himself to the jury, as he did during this interview with our office, as a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory. That's what her wrote in explaining his rational for declining prosecution. Part of it, that was part of it, not all of it. It would be difficult to convince a jury that they should convict him. By then, a former president who will be at least well into his 80s um, of a serious felony that requires a mental state of willfulness. Uh, folks, <laughs> and later on, I should add this, later on, he's, he, for good measure, he said uh, he believed Biden was suffering from diminished faculties in advancing age, in other words, diminished capacity. Uh, th this is amazing that they're saying this because, in my opinion, um, her, all her had to say was, in this case, and it would be true, 
is, yeah, we found that, um, you know, there was wrongdoing in the part of of Mr. Biden, of, of President Biden. However, because he's a sitting president, we cannot prosecute him, and they wouldn't be able to because he is a sitting president. So they would not be able to prosecute him now. Could they do it later on when he you know, left office? Sure, but who's going to? Like, like, like they say here, classic example. He's an old man. By the time he would get out, um, even if he did, if he if he uh, didn't get reelected, um, then he would be out in what eleven months, less than a year. Um, but if he got reelected, it, I mean, theoretically anyway, he could be in there for another four years. So. Uh, I, th- I think they were trying to save him uh, the embarrassment of a prosecution when he got out. Um, and this diminished capacity thing was, was added in there, I think, as, as a way to, uh, to satisfy uh, the intent. They're trying to say he had no intent. But, I, you know, I, I don't believe that, folks. I think some of it may be true that there was no intent. Some of the things that they did find... I think maybe he, you know, he did not know they were there. They may have been put there by a, an aide or something when they moved things around or move offices or whatever. I suppose that's a possibility. But there are a couple things in this report that um, definitely uh, point to me anyway that he had intent. And not only that, but, um, you know, that he disseminated some of this information. But he admits it himself that um, he disseminated some of this information to his ghostwriter. Who wrote the? Who wrote a? He was writing a book back in two, two, 2017, I think it was, um, and he, he admits that he admitted that he had, um, you know, uh, allowed access to this information to uh, the, the ghostwriter. Uh, it's amazing, folks, because in this report, and you can get the report, uh, folks, uh, by going up to uh, the Talk Show American blog. Uh, talk to America, www.talkshowamerica.com, and you'll see the report, the, the report, uh, a report up there, and, and down just down below the the story, which is uh, you know basically I embedded it from Twitter when I had it on Twitter. You'll see it says you can get access to the full report here. Click on that link; it'll give you the PDF, and you'll see the report for yourself. And it's you know it's the actual report, and uh, you know in this report, um, it's 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 it he admits that he um you know allowed access to his to those uh, some of those documents to his ghostwriter and and it's it really is amazing when you think about this uh, because you know not only did he have this stuff which he wasn't supposed to have at the time because he was you know he's a senator and then vice president none of them can declassify the information and and bring it home. In other words, bring it somewhere else besides where it is. I mean, they can look at it. They certainly can, can uh, you know, in their office and things do it. But they cannot bring it outside of those confines. And, you know, this was done because they can't declassify as President Trump could. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're going to try. They, they've already tried in here. They they, they tried to, uh, you know, they, they tried to put a comparison in uh, saying that, you uh, um, They'd say right here the exception is uh, in uh, his form of President Trump. Uh, in this case, it, it, they're t- saying it's not our role to assess the criminal charges against President Trump, but several material di- distinctions between um, Trump's case and Biden's are clear. Unlike the evidence involving Biden, the allegations set forth in the indictment of, of Trump, um, if proven, would, would would present serious aggravating facts. Well, the thing is, they haven't yet. But they're and, but they're already talking about a case in here that has not yet been that is you know he hasn't been convicted of, of of this yet and yet they're talking about this case as if he was um, so that you know trying to say that you know Biden turned in classified documents in the National Archives um, uh, you know and uh, to, the, to the Department of Justice he consented to uh, several. Uh, in locations including his home and for you know for a voluntary um you know for a certain voluntary search uh, you know and then a voluntary interview <laughs> of course so in reaching their decision they said they did not consider every circumstance in which criminal charges against a former president or vice president for mishandling classified information may be warranted 
But but they say on the facts of this case, the fundamental uh, interests of society do not require criminal charges against Mr. Biden. <laughs> and, and well, be, first of all, he's a sitting president right now, so they wouldn't be able to prosecute him. I don't know why they didn't say this in the first place, but they didn't. Okay, and so um, it says uh, for this additional reason, applying to the principles of federal prosecution set forth in the Justice Manual, we decline prosecution. Um, so, you know, basically they're not going to, they're, they're not going to prosecute them. Okay. Uh, you know, but they should have, the, the reason should have been um, that, you know, he's a sitting, sitting president. They're trying to say there was no intent. And I think, and maybe some of these documents, that may be true, but not all of them, folks. Because as we go, as it goes down in this, and, and if you get this report, you'll see it. It's, it's a 388 page report. Believe me, it takes a while to get through, but I was going through it. And uh, they were investigating whether or not um, other people besides Joe Biden mishandled these d documents, and they're investigating sure they did not. So they, no, in other words, aides or something might have brought, um, may, may have put these things in there not knowing what they are, and didn't look at them, just put boxes of them. And I suppose that's a, that's a possibility. So I'm not going to take that away from him. Uh, but in this. Um, investigation. They also found this out uh, that um, they learned of special counsel's appointment, and after they learned of special counsel's appointment in the matter, Mr. Biden's ghostwriter, who was writing this book, that he was writing a book uh, in 2017, his memoirs, um, he had audio, audio recordings that uh, of discussions between him and Biden. Well, he deleted them after. He found out about this investigation, not before, after. And they found this out, and they went and talked to him, obviously, and the, the, the man turned over his computer and external hard drive and consented to their search. Well, of course he did. He was able to get a warrant. They're going to get it anyway. And then he's an uncooperating witness, and what do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen from there is if they're going to charge him with obstruction. Of course, he's going to get, he's going to turn it over. But why did he delete those recordings in the first place? If he knew this investigation was coming, why delete the recordings? They don't tell you why, folks. They just tell you that he gave them a, a reasonable reason why he, why he did it. He admitted that he deleted the recordings after he learned about special counsel's investigation. And, but then they put in this in the, in the report. Investigation, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the evidence falls short of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that he intended to impede an investigation, which is the intent required by law. Well, why did he delete the, the recordings? Now, he did have some transcripts and things that I, evidently, evidently he kept. And, you know, they, they, he allowed access to it, but they were going to get a warrant anyway. That's what they would have done. They would have went and got a warrant. And they would have got this information. So why would you delete the recordings but keep the transcripts? This makes no sense. You know, and, and in a lot of ways. And so the bottom line is that he, the, the ghostwriter, and they don't mention what his name is here, but uh, um, he had access to this material, which is classified material. But you know, and, and then when he he finds out that they're conducting an investigation, he deletes recordings of discussions between him and Joe Biden in regards to the to the uh, to the, to the material and the book. It to me it makes no sense because it would have, and and even they say here in the in the recordings had significant evidentiary value. His ghostwriter deleted the recordings he had created of his discussions with Mr. Biden during the writing of his um, Biden's 2017 memoir, and and they they clearly say in this uh, in in the report here that he did it after he found out about the investigation, not before, not hey you know I I needed room on my computer at hard drive so I I deleted these because we didn't need them anymore because I had transcripts of it or whatever he deleted them after. He learned of this investigation. To me, that's, there's, a, there's a lot to, to be said there. Because if you're talking about obstruction, even if it's not obstruction, you know, 
clearly. Um, it definitely is uh, what I would say um, is uh, an attempt to obstruct. Now, the fact that he cooperated and gave them all the other stuff they needed, uh, you know, or allowed them to search for it um, without a warrant is, is great because, I mean, I'm sure they told him, if we have to get a warrant, then you're going to be charged with obstruction or attempted obstruction. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's amazing to me, folks, the, the, the double standard in all of this stuff. Uh, you know, you don't even know, and we don't have a, a conviction of Trump yet in regards to these, the, his classified documents, and we don't even know what's true or not true about what happened down there. Uh, but yet they put it in this report to try to soften the book, because I know people are going to ask why. Um, after telling the special counsel what he had done, the ghostwriter turned over his computer and external hard drive and consented to their search because they would have got a warrant for it if they didn't, if he didn't. It's as simple as that, folks. Of course he did, because now, you know, he's in the trick bag, and he knows it. So, in my opinion, him deleting the, the recordings between him and Biden in regards to the, these, these classic material and these memoirs, um, probably was damning to some extent. Now, they, they're saying that they got some of the, uh, you know, uh, they say they got some of the information out of the computer in regards to these deleted files. They did recover some of them. And, and you know, sometimes you'll get some of them that they're missing. The FBI recovered all deleted audio files relating to the memoir, though portions of a few of the files appear to be missing. That's in the report. You know, um, the ghostwriter kept and, and did not delete or attempt to delete his near verbatim transcripts of the recordings and produced these transcripts to us, including each of the incomplete recovered files. Okay, so I still have to ask, why delete the recordings after you discover there's an investigation into this. So they said, we considered whether to charge the ghostwriter with obstruction of justice, but we believe that the evidence would be sufficient to obtain um, a conviction and therefore decline, would not be, um, in, well, would be insufficient, I'm sorry, uh, not sufficient, but would be insufficient to sh obtain a conviction and therefore decline to prosecute him. Folks, I'm not saying that he should have been charged. He cooperated, that's fine. My question is, why did he delete the recordings after he learned of this investigation? And did he delete them on his own, or did somebody tell him to? And so, it's, according to this anyway, at least um, what they're saying is that they have the recordings, there's some missing files, but they have, you know, basically enough. So they're not going to charge him with obstruction. Okay, he cooperated. I don't have a big problem with that, but one of the things that did intrigue me here a little bit, too, when reading this, and I'm going to have to get some clarification on this, because I don't know if, I'm trying to find it now, of course, you know, I went by it, when I was talking, trying to read this quick, um, okay, uh, let's see, I mean, they're, they're believing that, uh, you know, he didn't re willfully retain some documents uh, that they could have plausibly been brought to the location by mistake. And I'm not going to say that couldn't happen, because it could have. You know, there's no doubt in my, my mind about that. You know, that some of these places where where he had these, it could have been brought down there and without his basically knowing it, an aide or something could have brought it there, and they didn't realize that this stuff was in there and put it into the office, like at uh, the college and stuff. That's a possibility, and I'm not going to say it's not, because it is. You know, I'll be, you know... Um, uh, I'll be fair with that. And they, they started talking about his cognizant ability. And, you know, one of the things they were talking about is, you know, that he couldn't, re the, the, one of the biggest damning things, in my opinion, is he couldn't remember when he was vice president. Uh, although he knew he was vice president, he couldn't remember the dates. And he actually asked them during this interview if he was the, still the vice president now. I, I mean, you would know if you're, you're the president or the vice president. It's pretty clear that you'd know. Now, this isn't a laughing matter because I know I've had family members who have had um, dementia, 
you know, who, who didn't survive, obviously, had dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, my mother, uh, my grandmother, my uh, mother-in-law uh, went through this. And now, right now, my sister is, is in this cognitive, cognitive decline, and she's younger than I am. Uh, this, you know, this is a sad thing for any family to have to go through. And so I'm, I'm not trying to make light of this. I know some people are, but I'm not trying to make light of this because it's not funny. It really isn't. But we've seen it for a long time. And I've seen the signs. I see them all the time when I see him. He gets angry really quick a lot of times. Um, he, uh, you know, he's, he slurs his speech a lot of times and slurs words. On down the line, you know, you, you or oh, mixes up people's names or doesn't, you know, talks about people that have been dead for a while that he said he talked to last week or something. You know, I mean, these are the signs, folks. I've gone through all this with, uh, you know, the elderly fam family members, uh, you know, at, at some point in time until their death. You know, until the way that they don't know who you are uh, or they think you're someone else that you're not. You know, and, and I'm sure many family members out here have gone through the same thing. So we all know what it is. So I don't want to make fun of it. You know, it's, it, but it definitely is, you know, he has, he has cognitive decline. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And I don't know what they've been giving him, if they've been giving him anything to, you know, to help combat that. Um, but obviously it's, it, it has come to fruition. Uh, and so this is what I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of minutes here, because when they were talking with the ghostwriter, he said he admitted that he deleted the recordings after he learned of the special counsel's investigation. Now, in here, they don't say, you know, they, it says the evidence falls short of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that he intended to impede an investigation, which is the intent required by law. In his interviews, the ghostwriter offered plausible, innocent reasons for why he deleted his recordings. Now, what are those reasons then? Why didn't they put it in here? They put everything else in this report. They talk about Trump. Well, the reason why we're not we're charging Trump, we're not charging Biden, is because of this, blah, blah, blah. That. There's no proof that you have not, you have, although you have a, you know, a trial going on, there is no definitive proof that he violated the law. And yet they're trying to put this in there and, and, and make the determination. But down, down below here, they turn around and say that he offered a plausible, innocent reason for why he deleted the recordings, but they don't say what it is they don't tell you what the what the plausible reasons are innocent reasons like oh i did i deleted them because um you know i needed more room in my computer or i deleted them by mistake even you know why because nobody's going to believe it that's why i mean it's this is this is this report it's it's if i'm a judge and i'm looking at this report i'm saying so what were those reasons what are the plausible, innocent reasons? Why aren't they in here? You have every other thing in here where you try to show that, well, this is the reason why they didn't do that, because of this. Well, what were the reasons why he deleted the recordings? That's still a question in my mind. That's important, because they're not charging this man with, uh, you know, um, with the uh, uh, interfering with an investigation. Not charging with obstruction. And that's fine, if that's what they choose to do. But why? I mean, he 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 did, um, you know, he did uh, cooperate and give them the things that they wanted without them getting a warrant, which is basically what the cooperation is. Because if if he doesn't cooperate, and I'm sure he was told this, if you don't cooperate, we're going to get a warrant, and then we're going to charge you with obstruction because that will make it look like you're trying to obstruct this investigation by not cooperating, making us get a warrant to get the stuff and to get the uh, the material that they want. So of course he cooperated. I mean, I don't blame him either. Of course he cooperated. It makes sense. But in this, let me get back to this because I keep getting away from it. Um, in the interview, he, he offered plausible, innocent reasons for why he deleted the recordings. Again, I asked the question, why? But they don't put it in here. It says he also preserved his transcripts that contained some of the most incriminating information against Mr. Biden including his statement about finding all the classified stuff downstairs in 2017, which is inconsistent with an, an, an attempt to impede an investigation by destroying evidence. Well, they, 
he he destroyed the recordings. That's evidence. And they say right in there that it was uh, significant evidentiary value, according to this report. But then they got this cockamamie thing in here of, you know, oh, yeah, well, you know, he, um, yeah, there was there was plausible, innocent reasons why, but they don't put what they are. If you're going to do all this, and they've gone through a lot of painstaking things down here to tell you why they're not charging him, then why wouldn't you put in why he, you know, he deleted him by accident. He deleted him because, you know, he had, uh, you know, uh, you know, he had, uh, no, you know, he needed more memory in his computer or something. Why wouldn't you put that in there? What's the innocent, plausible reason why you removed him after, after, not before, not, you know, unwittingly didn't realize it was going to be an investigation, after he heard about the investigation? Sounds to me, at least, and I'm not saying this is true because I don't know. I'm just speculating here. Sounds to me like maybe somebody told him to delete him and didn't know maybe that he had the transcripts besides. Now, he produced the, you know, the notes. So that's why they weren't going to, you know, from uh, and, you know, and all that stuff. That's fine. I mean, listen, uh, you know, it's, it, he says, for these reasons, we believe this is a report. For these reasons, we believe that the admissible evidence would not suffice to obtain a conviction of the ghostwriter for obstruction of justice. You know, this is on balance, rel rel relevant, aggravating, and mitigating factors also did not support his prosecution. Because he cooperated, I get that. That's basically what it is. Because he cooperated and, and allowed the, the, the laptop or whatever it was, the computer, whatever he had, um, uh, you know, to be taken. Um, and, you know, the, the transcripts and everything were on there or whatever. That's fine, okay, and they were able to do this because, again, as I said, if he didn't do this, they're going to get a warrant, and they're going to get what they need, whether he likes it or not. And then, again, that becomes the, you know, they're going to be upset. And I've, I've done this, folks, you know, um, in my career. Somebody doesn't want to, you know, cooperate and give us the thing legally, which they don't have to. They could say, listen, go get a warrant. Okay, I, I get that. That's their right. But if I have probable cause to need that, th those things for my investigation, I'm getting the warrant. And now that you've made me do all that, uh, I'm going to be charging you if, 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 if it's, you know, if I can. I'm not, there's not going to be any more, well, let's make a deal here. You know, if you give us this, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll soften it or we'll cut it down or we'll, you know, we'll you talk with the DA or whatever. We'll do what we can. But if you're going to make me jump through all these hoops, and which you can do legally, nothing says you can't, you have that right, then, you know, all bets are off. That's basically probably what happened here, you know. So um, I don't think it was so much that they didn't have enough to prosecute him. I think it was that he cooperated, and they decided that, you know, at this point in time they weren't going to because he's not the big fish anyway. But in this whole thing, the reason why I talk about this is Biden, these documents were basically provided to this, at least it appears anyway, they were turned, they were, they were um, provided to this ghostwriter. And if, if I'm, I'm looking at this other thing, and, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the way that they were, they were the sentence, he also preserved his transcripts that contained some of the most incriminating evidence against Mr. Biden, including his statement, now I, I'm, I'm wondering if you're saying Mr. Biden's statement, about finding all the classified, uh, you know, classified stuff downstairs in 2017. Now, if they mean Joe Biden found all this stuff, this classified stuff downstairs in 2017, what does that tell you folks? What that tells you is that Joe Biden knew it was down there and didn't get, didn't get a hold of anybody. Instead, provided it to this uh, to the ghostwriter. Is that what it means? I, I, I'm trying to get, look at this and, uh, you know, the, the, the way it reads. It says, you know, that the, basically he, being the ghostwriter, also preserved uh, his transcripts, ghostwriter again, that contained some of the most incriminating information against Mr. Biden. Now they're talking about Mr. Biden. And then it goes on, there's a little hyphen, and says, including the statement about finding all the classified stuff downstairs in 2017. So I'm, t I'm assuming they're talking about Mr. Biden. Downstairs where? I'm assuming his residence. So 
once again, we have Joe Biden, at least if you go by uh, with these things here, um, in the transcripts, uh, makes a statement that says uh, he found all these classified stuff downstairs in 2017, and yet, what does he do? He doesn't get, contact someone and say, hey, I found some more classified, I found some classified documents, and, you know, I don't know how they got here, or, you know, they got moved here by mistake, you know, I got to turn them in or whatever, you know. He keeps them, and he, what does he do? He decides he's going to create a memoir, and he supplies them, what it appears to be anyway, he supplies it to this ghostwriter. So there's two things he's done. He's kept the documents, which he wasn't supposed to, he had no right to as vice president, or as a senator, to keep them, to, to take them from the place and, and bring them to his place of residence. He had no right to do that. Uh, okay, but um, he's got them. And however they got down to the basement, I don't know if maybe somebody, you know, brought him there. No, again, another aid or something. But he has them and he discovers them. According to that statement, he found them. At least that's the way I'm reading it. And he makes no attempt at that point in time to return them. So why is that any different than what they were alleging Donald Trump did? In this case... He doesn't make any attempt to return them. He supposedly knows they're there, supplies them to the to the uh, the ghostwriter. Now, I, you know, I'm, the way I'm reading that, that's exactly what it appears to be against Mr. Biden, including his statement about finding all the classified stuff downstairs in 2017. His statement being, and I'm because now they're talking about Biden. That's the way I'm looking at it, folks. Did the did the, uh, the ghostwriter find all the stuff downstairs? That doesn't make any sense. So, when you're reading this, you're looking at this, you can tell this was written in a way to try to soften everything. The best thing they could he could have said here, in my opinion, was, hey, you know, we uh, didn't charge him because um, he's a sitting president, so we can't do anything. And by the time he got out, folks, it's true. You know, he's, he's what, 80-something years old now. I mean, he's going to, you know, they're going to look at it, and I'm sure the jury's going to look at it and say, the guy, listen, the guy's 80-something years old. Why are we even bothering? You know, especially where you can see. You can see his cognitive de decline when you watch him on TV. Just the way he talks, the way he walks around. Sometimes he walks around aimlessly. You can see it. And I know I've been through this. I've been through this. I've been through all of these things that are just, they don't make any sense. But this is what happens with a lot of people when they get older. It's unfortunate. And I think you're seeing that with, with Joe Biden. And that's one of the reasons, or one of the reasons, not the, not the only reason, just one of the reasons, because, you know, they, they give a couple here. But in my opinion, um, the intent was there. You know, maybe for some of the things it wasn't. Okay, and I and I would, I would give them that they they may have been in some places that they didn't know they were there, but he this this stuff is discovered in 2017, and yet there was no attempt to return it at that point in time. So he willfully and, and, and has it. He knows they're there. What intent was no intent. To, he wanted to write a. He wanted to, uh, this this guy to write a book. That's why he did it. So, the intent the intent, in my opinion, is there. But I I get why they're not charging because again I think a large largely is because they're going to see this you know this Mr. Biden at, at some point in time when he's not president they could have charged him. But it's it's you know the jury's probably going to be sympathetic to him because of his condition. So I just wanted to point these things out. I mean, again, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I think there's a double standard here. I think it still exists because, as I said, right, I just showed here that, you know, they found this stuff downstairs in, in 2017, and I'm assuming they're talking about Mr. Biden's residence or whatever, and there was no attempt to return it. It, it doesn't appear until later. Well, in 2017, let's face it, and, until he became recently, you know, he became president, they didn't even really have this investigation into classified documents. Then they found out, not only him, but, you know, uh, uh, 
the vice president uh, under Trump had them, the Pence. You know, I mean, so do I think that this some of that some of that could have been by mistake? Sure. Okay, but all this all the classified stuff downstairs finding it in 2017, and we're not hearing about it until in 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 what was it 2020. Uh, you know, 2021, whatever, whenever this came out, I can't off the top of my head remember the exact date, but um, that, uh, you know, here it is. He, they don't say, hey, you know, we found this stuff down in the, the basement and we don't know how it got here, but we want to turn it all in. They didn't do that, folks. So, 2017. Okay, so they didn't do this. In 2017, you know, um, he was not president. So, uh, that's all I'm trying to point out. Uh, you know, I'm not a lawyer. You know, so I, you know, I have to be, you know, I'm trying to be careful when I talk here. I, ha I do have, um, you know, some, uh, you know, some experience with search warrants and things of this nature. Believe me when I tell you, I've been, been doing it a long time. Well, I don't do it anymore. Obviously, I'm retired, but... I still, you know, I've been doing it a long time, and I know how these things work for big investigations. You know, not, you know, obviously not classified document things that I would do, but um, when you tell people, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get a warrant, you know, I, I'm, I've got this information, do you have this? We, uh, you know, um, and if they say, well, I have it, but, uh, you know, well, we'd like it, well, you, you know, can, can we take it, or, you know, are you going to let us take it, or do we have to get a warrant? Some people say get a warrant, okay. You know, and then we tell them, you know, if we find stuff, if I have to go through all this and I find the information I need, um, you know, you're definitely going to, you know, be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. So you try to make a, you know, you try to get a little bit of a deal with them. I think this worked out for the, for the uh, ghostwriter. And, you know, maybe he wasn't, maybe he didn't know that he couldn't, didn't have, he couldn't have access to this stuff. But going on this statement get this get this report folks i'm telling you it's uh it's you know if you go up to the site talkshamerica.com on the blog you're going to see this story um there and just right below the story um right underneath the uh, uh the post you're going to see it says you can access the report here it's a pdf and you'll get it and you'll um it's been supplied by just the news uh, dot com, which is a great um, site for uh, factual uh, information, um, very well. You know, they they vet their information very well, uh, and it's 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 a long report. So I'm only going through some of this. That's the summarization of it. There's a lot more in it, um, and they go into you know they go into a lot of uh, legalese stuff, and it's it can become you know daunting. But you know, if you want to read it, it's there. I'm just going over what. You know the basic uh, terminology was here that you know how they how they came across this and you know how they wanted to keep him from um, uh, prosecution. Which, if they'd have just said, and this is my opinion only, but if they'd have just said we we we, we declined to prosecute Mr. Biden because he is, you know, you know, a sitting president. Therefore, we can't we can't we can't um, prosecute him, they would have been better off. But instead, they went into all of this, um, you know, all of this uh, talk about his uh, in, uh, declining faculties and things of this nature. You know, those weren't the exact words they used, but um, you know, it it really it really didn't make him look good, folks. And for those of us that want to um, think that yeah, this is okay and you know, this is great, and, you know, we're gonna, just remember, who are we going to get as president? First of all, if he if he's out suddenly, um, it's going to be Kamala Harris, most likely. <laughs> Not a great choice. Some people are talking about Michelle Obama becoming the candidate um, if, if he's out. Uh, or it could be Kamala. Uh, so, I don't know if it's such a great thing, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to see what happens here. So that's that's that story. Um, there was another story I wanted to talk about a little bit too today because um, it talks about you know it talks about some the Supreme Court 
when they had this hearing, they started this hearing yesterday on whether or not Trump can be on the, the ballot in Colorado. And there was some interesting, very interesting um, justices who had opinions on this that were, um, you know, something that you wouldn't, you wouldn't feel that this is they have an opinion on. So I'm beginning to think that this will be um, a win for Trump, a, a big win Trump, maybe even 9-0, folks, although I don't know if we can hope for that completely. But there are a couple of people here who may, who piped in, like Justin uh, Just, uh, Justice uh, Elna Kagan, who questioned Colorado's attempt to keep Trump off the ballot with a case-killing question. One of the things that she said in this thing is, you know, that she doesn't think that one state should be able to decide who the president's going to be. And I agree with her on that. You know, so she's saying if you're going to keep him off the ballot, um, you can't make the decision. Let the people decide. Of course, um, Clarence Thomas um, had him, you know, was, 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 was uh, talking, you know, uh, to, uh, to the lawyer and basically asked some questions um, and had, had the lawyer grasping its straws. And then there's an audio from uh, uh, Justice Jackson, uh, who names key details that may guarantee that you know Trump's going to be back on the Colorado ballot. So um, let me just get into one of the Jay Kagan. Let me look at this for a minute, and I can tell you better um, what's uh, what the story was. And it says liberal justice um, devast devastates Colorado's attempt to keep Trump off the ballot with a case-killing question, and um, it appears that. That question, uh, Thursday during the, the oral arguments, um, is going to be you know something that obviously I didn't think that she would think this way, but it does. Um, she does in this case. So the question is about the, the you know I mean about him being able to uh, you know be on the ballot. Uh, so it goes into a little bit, but uh, we want to go get to where, you know, she says, uh, you know, during the oral, oral arguments yesterday, she um, told uh, Jason Murray, the attorney representing Colorado voters, most boldly, I think that the question that you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. In other words, uh, the question of whether a former president is qualified for insurrection or whatever uh, to be president again is, is just to say it sounds awfully national to me, she continued. Uh, so whatever means um, there are to enforce it would suggest that they have to be a federal national means. So he hasn't been convicted of anything. He hasn't been charged with insurrection. hasn't been convicted of it. Uh, so this is what she's trying to say. She's trying to say that uh, it would be extraordinary for uh, that one secretary of state in a, in, in, in a swing state, uh, Wisconsin or Michigan, could have the power to decide who the next president would be simply by ruling that he or she is not eligible to be on the ballot. So, I mean, these are, I'm, I'm very actually, uh, you know, uh, surprised because she counted uh, him with his, with his, uh, his, um, with his ruling, she counted him. Uh, so anyway, here we are again, folks. As, as I said, um, I had to go to a, uh, a phone call, so I'm sorry I interrupted it. But, you know, she basically is saying, uh, why should a single state have the ability to make this determination? This was Kagan. Uh, you know, not only from their own citizens, but from the rest of the nation, she asked. And, and this is exactly this. Now, they talk about, you know, you know, uh, he talks about uh, the uh, article, uh, Murray cites Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution, which gives states the power to decide how to choose their presidential elector, uh, electors. Um, but that doesn't really go to the question of who is on the presidential ballot in the first place. Okay, so even, uh, I mean, uh, Amy Comey Barrett uh, jumped in and asked Murray about the d difference, d different means each state might use to establish that a candidate is ineligible. 
and what is the what if this decision is made by the Secretary of State without much due process at all? Uh, it just doesn't seem like a state call. She she added. So, uh, and so it, it you know, it, it Murray suggested that it would fall on the U.S. Supreme Court to do its own review of the factual record. Well, there you go, folks. You know, so uh, it's 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 really you know, if, if you look at this, you know, obviously she's uh, she was appointed by Trump. So, uh, but but for Justice Kagan, the question that you'd have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. And I think that's part of the 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 big uh, thing. Let the people decide. The people don't want Trump then in that state, then they won't vote for Trump. It's as simple as that. Um, but they're looking at the possibility here of 9-0 to zero or 8-1, to one, with Kagan and other liberal justices joining in. Uh, it would take the era of the, the special counsel Jack Smith's federal election interference case against Trump. That's what they're looking at. Um, so I think the air might already be taken out just in regards to this situation here where, um, you know, obviously uh, Biden's not going to be prosecuted. And, and, you know, they can say all they want about the intent, but the bottom line is, folks, <laughs> there, you know, there appears to be intent, at least in the, in the, in the fact that these uh, other um, documents were found in the basement or downstairs or whatever, and in, in, I'm, I'm assuming a residence of some sort of Biden's, and they were never, in, in 2017, they were never turned over to um, the archives, or, you know, nobody made any mention, hey, we found these things, so what do we do with them? So it's, it's, it's really amazing to me, you know, that they try to make this intent go away. Listen, just say, what they should have said, exactly what he should have said was, well, you know, they, you know we, he did violate the law, but we can't prosecute him because he's a sitting president. And by the time he gets out, obviously, um, you know, at least, especially, if, you know, whether he's reelected or not, he's probably too old to prosecute because of what they're, what they're saying. They're saying, folks, we aren't even saying this. They are. Um, her saying his, basically, his cognitive decline. So it should be interesting to see what happens. So we'll be back in a moment. So we're back. You know, we're back, folks. We just had to uh, take a, uh, a brief pause. Uh, but uh, so those were, uh, you know, some of the just justices there. Um, there also is uh, a, uh, uh, you know, another justice who, uh, you know, uh, left wing justice uh, uh, Jackson. Does she name key decals that may, you know, guarantee that he's returning to the to the ballot? Um, so the color of the ballot. So let's look into what she said here, and we're going to wrap it up here. Um, it says, of course, the commentary here. <laughs> it's a shocking audio. I, I never put that in because it's not shocking. Um, uh, it's in an audio recording from inside the courtroom. According to this on Thursday, broadcast on C-SPAN, it posted. On social media uh, X, Justice Brown, uh, Justice J uh, Jackson, uh, Katani Brown Jackson, noted an obvious problem with Colorado's contention that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment allows for Trump's removal from the state's presidential ballot. In short, she pointed out that the 14th Amendment's third section does not mention the office of president. The full text of the, of the uh, third section reads, um, no person shall uh, be a senator or representative in Congress or elector or of president and vice president or hold any office civil or military under the United States or in any other state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial office in any state, uh, to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, um, may by a vote of two-thirds of each House, remove such disability. Um, she had it right, the disqualification based on insurrection or rebellion applied to congressional offices as well as president, presidential and vice presidential electors. It also listed any office, civil or military, but it did not expressly mention the presidency. And again, folks, uh, I come back to the thing is there is no, there was no conviction of insurrection or even a charge. 
so, um, you know, she's basically saying, can you speak to the argument that really uh, Section 13 was about preventing the South from rising again in the context of these sorts of um, local elections as opposed to focusing on the presidency? He, uh, he, uh, Murray responded with some type of strange comment about states regulating ballot access, prompting her, uh, Jackson, to clarify that she had not asked about ballot access in general. Um, so, I mean, we're coming down to this, folks. Uh, you know, she asked why, you know, why they didn't put the, the office of the presidency in the section. Um, and, again, even if the office of the presidency was in there, my whole question is, again, he was not charged with nor convicted of insurrection. So... It's 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 amazing that these you know these uh, leftist uh, justices are asking these questions, um, you know, which which I didn't know that they would, you know, that, you know well, and I suppose and to, to be fair, they're being fair, and there's a difference, but um, you know, uh, so th th these questions being asked by leftist judges. Is certainly, um, you know, being being at least portrayed as a, a look that appears that maybe that you know there's going to be a nine to zero vote or maybe an eight to one. We'll see. But the bottom line is, folks, um, regardless, it doesn't look like they're going to get a win on this Colorado. Looks like the president's going to win, but we'll have to see. They haven't made any votes yet or anything, so we don't want to you know, jump to, you know too too fast. But certainly, it's looking like. It's going to go in the president's favor as as of t as of today, but um, that could change rapidly. We'll have to see what's going on. All right, that's all the time I'm going to have for today, folks. Um, you know, I'd like to talk more, but I've got some more other stuff going on, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen. We certainly appreciate it. I want to apologize for the probably for the audio. I didn't realize that my other mic is not working, so I end up going off the computer mic which may make it a little, little bit uh, tinny sounding or whatever. I'm going to try to work on that, but um, that's the reason why if you get that. We're going to be, uh, come back to you, uh, you know, again, uh, hopefully next week with uh, more on all, all of this and see where it goes. In the meantime, stay safe, you know, keep, keep watching, see what goes on. Who knows? It's anybody's game at this point in time, but I think that the president uh, probably has the upper hand, and, and Biden obviously, you know, has... Uh, you know, some things that he has to worry about uh, pretty soon, in my opinion, whether or not he's even going to be on the ballot uh, when, the, when the time comes for 2024. We'll talk to you later, folks. Have a great day. Stay safe. You're listening to the Talk Show America Show. God bless.